up, everybody? Welcome to a hunt, uh, episode 136 <laughs> of the Star. Monday Night Wars. I am Chad Talks, and joining me, as always, is... 370 Gaming. 370 Gaming. Hey, guys. J-Mac here. How you doing? <laughs> 370, what, what have you been up to, man? Um, nothing. <laughs> Sounds yeah. about right. That's right. right. That wasn't, that wasn't supposed, you gonna upload some that content, wasn't huh? supposed gonna to upload. be a rib, brother. Hey, was... what are we getting? <laughs> I didn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I, I'm still waiting to win the G4 Climax, brother. <laughs> Bro, that dead ass. after my next project that has yet to be announced, that is the next thing. <laughs> hey. I don't believe Get serious. You. I'm dead serious. Let's run the show, boys. All right. Dead fucking serious. Chad, why hey. did I book this? <laughs> All right. So in this pre-show match, Savio Vega defeated Miguel Perez Jr. with the Caribbean kick. They look like literally the same person. <laughs> That's why I booked it. <laughs> to, the, to the untrained eye, one would think that. I can tell them apart easily. You see, Miguel Perez Jr. Oh, okay. In a pre-show bout. <laughs> And he's a wrestling, but that is the crowd heat. La Parca <laughs> defeats Drago in 642 with a sky twister press. And then Afterward, he... so La Parca wins, and then Barry Darso comes out, says, I'm glad you won. Give me this fucking mask. <laughs> and then he takes the mask. La Parca's like, what? <laughs> All right. I'm glad you won. Give me this fucking mask. <laughs> Give me this fucking mask. All right, can I explain this real quick? Go yes. Ahead. So, <laughs> Mr. Cat Miller comes out and he says he's got a special pre-show dark match challenge, brother. Dark he's got match five, challenge. Five minute white boy challenge. He says, if you can last five minutes with me, I'll give you $100,000. Oh, man. Big baller. So, so he waits for someone to come out. It's Chef Psychosis. The guy, Cat Miller freaks out. He says, you're not white. <laughs> He says, you're not white. This is a white boy challenge. He says, all right, all right. This is now a Mexican challenge. This is a Latino boy challenge. And uh, he knocks him out in like a, a minute and a half. Minute, minute 22. Takes him no the... time. Oh, Walks man. $1,000. And then throws them and makes it rain on top of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely right. The fuck is going on? All right, and that was our banger of a pre-show in the Oklahoma Ford Center. All right, Chad. All right, and Holy instead of a fuck, promo, seventy-eight. <laughs> instead of a perceive what would happen, you would have made it like the, like, like the five minutes I wanted to go, but the longer. But in a pop that started the show with good wrestling and a decent from the crowd, Raven defeats Billy Kidman in fourteen thirty-seven with a pile driver. The, what in the hell? Raven this was supposed so to go twenty minutes, by the way. And I bet it would have gotten an 80. Lodi coming from Thunder, doing some good work. <laughs> it's the lowdown with Lodi and the sickest man in the game. Sing blah! <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Maybe if you watch the gimmick, you know. Fuck me, man. Sing blah! I haven't Sing watched. Sing <laughs> Lodi and Sing blah! Listen, Bill Kidman, you're the master brawler. Time has passed me by, brother. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> so, we go. We show what happened last week when Eric, when uh, Hulk Hogan uh, left his boots in, in the middle of the ring and, and uh, looked around the crowd and, and left. And Bischoff comes down and he says, I've been trying to get a hold of my friend Hulk Hogan to no, to no avail. I keep getting his voicemail. And then he... Uh, Plays his voicemail. This is like, what's up, brother? You're not the Hulkster. Leave a message at the beep. Beep, brother. And uh, Bishop says, I just can't, haven't been able to get a hold of him. So, Hulk, wherever you are, listen, we can still do this. You can still show that you can still go. And all we have to do is just bring back the NWO. You can come back. We'll reform it. We'll take that gold off of the off of the shoulders of Goldberg. And once again, Hulk, you will show how you can be the Hulkster again. You can be the best wrestler in the planet. You can be WCW. And all you need to do is just too sweet me, put back on that black bandana, and we can go, brother. And then Goldberg comes down and he says, listen, all right, I don't give a damn where Hogan is. The only thing I care about is this belt and beating people up. 
So if you're gonna if you're not going to give me an opponent tonight to beat up, then I'll just beat you up tonight. How's that sound? Bishop says, take it easy, man. Listen, all right. I am still mourning the, the loss of my friend Hulk Hogan. So for, luckily for you, I'm not getting in the ring. Because if I did, I'd end the streak and I'd take that belt and I'd bring it home to, to the NWO. But don't worry, because I got something planned for you tonight. You're going to go one-on-one against the global champion, Eddie Guerrero. So Goldberg Eddie tonight. And then in a t- decent match, <laughs> that 70s team, Disco and Awesome, attack the Le- defeat the Legion of Doom in 1008 when Mike Awesome defeated Road Warrior Animal with an awesome bomb. During that match, we also had Jeff Hardy run in an attack hawk. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the show, Legion of Doom. Welcome to WCW. And the Hardy Boys get in the ring and they, get, they said, last week the Legion of Doom attacked us after we beat the Dudley Boys. So tonight we had our comeuppets. Legion of Doom, we're gonna chat we're gonna put our tag team titles on the line against both of you. And then Disco grabs a, a, a microphone and says, Now hold the phone here. Alright, we pinned the Legion of Doom. And if they're the number one contenders and we pin the number one contenders, then that should make us the number two contenders, and you put one plus two, that makes three, and there's a three-way at the pay-per-view. You two versus us two versus them two. Now, what do you say to that? And man, just look at each other, and then kick Disco in the gut. With a twi- Matt hits him with a twist of fate, and Jeff hits him with a swanton bomb, and then say, you're on. Moron. <laughs> so, yeah, triple threat match for the tag titles. Nice. Good for Mike Awesome. Good for Mike Awesome. Getting a title match. Good for Mike All right. Awesome. Kurt Hennig comes down to the ring and shows All the video awesome. of, of last week when he got <laughs> upset by the up-and-comer Stephen Regal. He says, I am perfect! And last week, I was a fluke. I got beaten by Stephen Regal. So tonight, I want any newcomer, some young buck, that wants to come up here and try to tango with the perfect man himself and, and, and see just how much they... We're having a white boy challenge! Oh! <laughs> holy shit! Holy shit! Who can go ten minutes with Kerhetic <laughs> other than all the women in the arena? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Prince Hayakea comes out. Is, it, he, that was, I don't like this gimmick anymore. I don't know, man. That was <laughs> edgy as fuck. I'm going to have to cut that. He goes to the ring, and Prince Hayakea goes 10 minutes with Kerr Hennig, but alas, couldn't get the job done, and Kerr Hennig beats him with the <laughs> Hennig Plex. After the match, Steven Regal comes out. He walks past Kerr Hennig, and he goes and picks up Prince Hayakea. And then taps him on the back. And then punches him with brass knuckles and knocks him unconscious. Steven Beagle, what happened? (laughs) We go backstage. Eddie Guerrero and Chavo. Chavo. (laughs) Big Daddy Chavo. (laughs) Just found out that he's going to be in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament next month. Eddie Guerrero looks at Chavo and says, All right, Chavo, listen, all right, you're going to win that tournament. All right, and you're gonna beat all those sorry excuses for wrestlers called the cruiserweights because you're the best cruiserweight in this whole company. All right, and you're a Guerrero. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you, Chavo. You haven't done much in this company since you've been here. All right, but this is gonna be what puts Chavo Guerrero on the map. This is gonna be what makes him the second best Guerrero in the history of wrestling, right under me. Right, Chavo. Right, Uncle Eddie. I'm going to win the match, and you're going to be Goldberg tonight. And who knows? After you get done defending your global championship, maybe you can then go after the world championship. And Eddie's like, you're right. I'm going to beat Goldberg, and I'm going to do it blindfolded. And he pulls out a blindfold. Ooh. And he says, because I can beat anybody, no matter what the odds, because I'm a Guerrero, and Guerrero means warrior. Viva la raza. And then he... He leaves. Damn. 
So, oh, we, we go to commercial, we come back. Homicide had no entrance. He's in the ring. And Altimo Dragon comes out with his Cruiserweight Championship. And they have a match. These two also got announced for the Cruiserweight Classic. And Altimo Dragon defeated Homicide in 832 with a submission. What submission was that? Yeah, what submission, sub- you ask yourself? I don't know. <laughs> I got one. The Dragon Sleeper. Yes, there you go. There we go. You got it. You got it. And then after that match, Rey Mysterio comes out, who also has been announced for the Cruiserweight Classic. Of he course. comes out with a steel chair and beats Ultimo Dragon in the back of the head with it. Oh, no. Honky Tonk Man at the announcing desk was pretty weak. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Fucking 98. <laughs> what the fuck? And you said this is the worst part of the company. This is the most, probably the most over thing I have. <laughs> Zid Vicious and Lex Luger get in the ring and they go, What's up? It's the total package! Zid Vicious, Lex Luger! And they both take both ends of the belt, hold it up in the air, and we are the television champion! Because every time we're on TV, it's must-see TV! We're the total cable package! The crowd pat, the crowd pops. And Sid Vicious says, And every single week we come out here and we challenge somebody because we're hungry. We're, 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 we are what true champions are made of. And we're going to do the same thing tonight when we put our belt on the line. When Lex Luger takes on whatever sorry excuse of a man comes out here and challenges the total cable package for <laughs> this TV title. Now get your sorry excuse of a wrestling ass out here. And Chris Canyon comes down. Yeah, and Lex over. Luger beats over. him. And 10-11 by pinfall. <sighs> After the match, Mortis comes out. He gets in the ring. <laughs> Sid Vicious and Lex Luger look at him. And they just they back away. They don't want none of Mortis. You know, they, 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 <laughs> take, their, they take they their championship. They take their championship and they, they leave with it. And Mortis is in the ring. And he picks up an unconscious Chris Canyon. And he, he hits him right with a pile driver. And then tell, grabs a microphone. Mortis is going to speak. And he picks up the microphone and he says, At Sold out. The, I'm going to take your soul right out. Oh. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> because Mortis is going to kill Chris Canyon. Canyon tried to kill Mortis and bury me away deep inside. Said he didn't need me to win. Now, I'm going to do the same thing to you, Chris Canyon. I'm going to take you away and bury you and no one will ever remember the sorry excuse of a man that was Chris Canyon ever again. Oh, no. And then Pyle drives him again. <laughs> I'm More emphasis. Fit and fire. I'm going to take your soul. And our main event in an exceptional match, Goldberg defeats Eddie Guerrero in 1525 with a spear. And he then grabs a microphone and says, Sting, you're... And then the lights go off. Oh. They come back on. And Sting turns around and... Bashes Goldberg in the head with a baseball bat. And he just keeps going, just with the baseball bat, like with shot after shot after shot. And Goldberg, like he goes for the swing, and Goldberg grabs the baseball bat, gets up and breaks it over his knee, and runs at Sting. And Sting takes Elizabeth and throws him in front of him. And Goldberg (laughs) spears Elizabeth. And then Goldberg, being the concerned gentleman that he is, asks if she's okay. And then Sting, scorpion death drop into the ring. And then Sting grabs a microphone and says... You're next. And then throws the microphone at him, and that's how we end the show. Wow. Are you telling me Sylvester Stallone was bad at the announcing desk? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at that three man announcing table. Is that what you're telling me? You're telling me they did a bad job. Are you the kidding? A team me? of hockey talk man, Rocky Balboa, and Tony <laughs> Schiavone. That's fucking money. <laughs> that is money. Maybe hockey talk man could be out. But Maybe. And it got an eighty six. It increased our popularity in twenty regions. What a banger. What a banger. I hate this. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was 
uh, uh, Nitro. Now, <laughs> make sure you all subscribe because we are only 68 away, probably less now, uh, to our special 370 celebration stream. And I'm going to jump a shark cage in a motorcycle. It's going to be a great time. And we're also going to have a very special guest. Of course, it would only make sense for the 370 live stream to have, of course, the great Max Marvelous, he's going to be here. Perfect. It's going to be great. So make sure you all get ready for that. Uh, it's a 370. Anything you want to plug? I'm just excited for this Max appearance on the live stream. Dude. That's going to be hype. It's going to be great. Probably, um, probably Max yeah, no. <laughs> just, uh, no, just just keep on, keep on rocking in the free world, brother. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. Bye. All right. <laughs> I, I guess bye. Bye. <laughs> Fuck, fuck the elite.